Hello everyone, this is Ashley Tucker. Thank you for joining me today. For today's card, I started with a piece of Canson watercolor paper taped down to a board and I'm going to be using my Gonzai Tombi watercolors. This purpley pink color that I'm starting with is color number 37 and I have it watered down on my palette and that palette that I'm using is just a piece of white cardstock that I have laminated. I'm going to be having the color concentrated in three of the corners on the paper and the upper right corner is going to be pretty light because that's where I'm going to have my light source in the scene that I'm creating. So I started out with this color pretty watered down and after I did a first layer of it I came back in and I just kind of darkened up the areas closest to the corners. Next I mixed in some dark purple. This is color number 139. It's a really really deep purple and I started darkening up the corners even more with that. Every now and then I come in with a paper towel and kind of dab up the paint in that little line of light that I have coming from the upper corner because I just want to make sure that it doesn't get too dark because like I said I'm creating a scene where I have a light shining down from that corner and I don't want to lose that light. You might have noticed that I brought in a blue color to my mix. That was color number 66. And I just kept slowly working on this and building up that color until I was happy with it. Next I brought in a yellow color. This is color number 40. And I watered it down a lot. And I only added a little bit of it. And I actually kind of dabbed it up a lot. I just wanted a very small hint of that yellow color and you can barely see it in the video but in real life you can see just a little hint of it. You have to be really careful when you work with purple and yellow together because they are complementary colors and if you mix them together too much you'll get a brown color. So I was very careful when I added that yellow. Once this background was dry I cut it down and now I'm working on adding some texture to it. For this technique, I added a whole bunch of dots of glossy accents to the background. And then I took this flat paintbrush and I started just kind of spreading them out, but not completely spreading it so that it's completely thin. I spread it so that there's a little bit of texture. So, so there's kind of like lines of glossy accents going through. And you can see it better when I turn the paper in the light. Now that paintbrush that I was using, that is not one of my good paintbrushes. That is my designated glue paintbrush. You do not want to use one of your good paintbrushes for that technique. Okay, so I'm using the Beautiful Mermaids stamp set that came in the Simon Says Stamp September card kit. And I stamped one of the mermaids from that set onto some Bristol Smooth paper using my Simon Says Stamp Intense Black ink. I'm using my Arteza Real Brush Pens to do the coloring on this image, and I'm using my Tim Holtz Detailer Water Brush to do all of my blending. And like usual, I'm not using the water brush the way that it's intended. I don't find that I'm very good at using water brushes, so I'm just dipping it into the water on that block to the side there. Some people might find it easier to use water brushes, but I tend to squeeze them too hard and too much water comes out. I get a whole lot better results when I just dip the paintbrush, but I like the brush on this water brush. That's why I use it. For the skin on the mermaid, I actually only used one color. I used the color pale skin and I just kept adding layers of it until I was happy. And it's not in the video, but after all the coloring was done, I actually went over the skin one more time with the same color to darken it up a little bit. For the hair on this mermaid, I used the colors pale green, shamrock green, and turtle green. I went all out green with this mermaid today, which is a little weird because I know in my last video I mentioned how I very rarely color my mermaid tails in green, and here I am giving you a second mermaid with a green tail. I swear I wasn't lying, I don't normally color my mermaid tails green, but for some reason lately the mood has just been green tailed mermaids. When I planned out this card, I knew that I wanted the background to be purple. I really wanted a purple water background, which I know is a little strange too, purple water, but 
you know, you, you can do whatever you want when you're painting it. So might as well paint it purple. And then after I painted the purple background, I was like, well, what color would look really good on this purple? And then I thought green. So that's why my mermaid is all green. For the tail on this mermaid, I used the same three colors that I used in the hair, but then I also threw in a little acid yellow. When I first started planning out this card, I really wanted to use my Copic markers to color in this mermaid, but if you've been watching my channel, you know that I just started my Copic collection and I don't have a whole lot yet, and I realized I don't have any skin colored ones, so that's something that I really need to go pick up. If you guys have any recommendations of good Copic skin color combinations, leave them in the comments below for me. Okay, so for her little shell bikini thing and for the star, I used the colors Acid Yellow and Honey. And then for the beads in her hair, I just colored those in with the honey color. Once the coloring was done, I fussy cut that image out with some scissors and then I took my purple watercolor background and I put it onto a card base using some foam tape. I used my white gel pen to add some dashed lines around the border of the watercolor panel. I was a little worried that the white gel pen wouldn't work over the texture that I created, but it went over that glossy accents texture just fine. I popped up my mermaid with some foam tape and I placed her so that it looks like that light is shining down on her face. I stamped a sentiment from the Beautiful Mermaids stamp set using my Simon Says Stamp embossing ink. The sentiment that I chose says make a wish upon a starfish, which really works well with the image that I chose, and I heat embossed that using a gold embossing powder. I used my ATG gun to adhere the sentiment strip onto a piece of vellum, and then I used my tonic trimmer to trim that down. I have to apologize for the lighting in the rest of my video. I'm normally a nighttime crafter, but for this particular card I had to craft really early in the morning, and at that early hour the light shines in through my window really brightly. So I'm going to work on a solution for covering that window better for the times when I have to craft early in the morning. Anyways, I popped that sentiment onto my card using some foam tape. Next I used my white gel pen to add some details and highlights to my mermaid. I added this really fun dot detailing to the hair. I was really happy with the way this detail came out. I really like the way that it looks, but I also think that it would look even better using a fine point gel pen. Like I mentioned in my last video, my fine point gel pen is all out of ink, so I have to get a new one. So that's why I'm using this bold one. I added a mixture of white and clear sequins, and I used my tweezers to pick them up while I glued them down with my Tombow glue. Finally, the last thing that I did to finish up this card is I took my Winkostella glitter brush and I added glitter all over this mermaid. And then this card was all done. And here's a closer look at how that texture looks on the card. You can kind of see it in the light. Thank you for watching today. I hope you really enjoyed this card using the Simon Says Stamp September card kit. All of the supplies that I used today can be found in the description down below. If you enjoyed watching and you haven't become a subscriber yet, I encourage you to hit that button so that you can see all of my future videos. I'm going to be back with a new video on Monday. Again, thank you for watching. I appreciate all of you, and I hope you have a great weekend.